What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales of neckbeards. Alright, this story's called, My Neckbeard Roommate Became Smitten with Zero Suit Samus. I've been watching a lot of neckbeard stories on YouTube recently, specifically Red X, uh, and it inspired me to share my story. This is the story of a roommate I had in my senior year of college. He was randomly assigned to me. I did not choose to live with this man. I did not have good luck with college roommates. See my previous post, Kevin, my college roommate. This man, however, was no Kevin. He was an almighty neckbeard. I know many people give the neckbeards in their stories creative names, but I can't think of anything good, so I'll just call him Michael because that was his name. He and I lived in a dorm apartment with two other people. We had four single rooms, so while I say that Michael was my roommate, he and I didn't actually sleep in the same room. Michael was about five foot ten and fat. If I I had to guess, I would say he weighed maybe 250 pounds. He had short black hair, which he cut himself with a pair of hair clippers he bought at Walmart. He did have a beard, but it wasn't really a neck beard. Michael's hygiene was fine, I guess. I have nothing really positive or negative to say about it. Michael spent most of his day in his room. He left our apartment to go to class or to get food, but besides that, he mostly stayed locked in his room. He spent almost all his free time playing video games in his room, especially World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, and Super Smash Bros., which I will discuss in a minute. He also always wore the same outfit, sweatpants, an anime or video game shirt, and grubby sneakers. I never saw him wear a fedora, unfortunately. Michael's diet consisted of Monster Energy, Coca-Cola, Doritos, and fast food. He did enjoy Mountain Dew, because of course, but his main beverages were Monster and coat. Many neckbeards like to think of themselves as really smart, but Michael genuinely was intelligent. He was studying electrical engineering, and he had a high GPA too. I think it was about 3.7 or 3.8. Electrical engineering is generally considered the hardest discipline of engineering, which is already a very difficult field. He wouldn't be able to do that well in a field such as that if he weren't smart. I rarely ever saw Michael do schoolwork though. I'm guessing he did it late at night when I was asleep. The story that best captures Michael's neck beardery involved his interest in Super Smash Bros. All four of us liked to play Smash Bros. Brawl together on Michael's Wii in our living room, but Michael was constantly asking us to play with him. You see, Michael was obsessed, and I mean obsessed, with Zero Suit Samus. If you aren't familiar, Samus is the protagonist of Nintendo's Metroid series. She used usually wears a suit of power arm, but when she takes the armor off, she's just wearing a skin-tight bodysuit, and that version is called Zero Suit Samus. Samus is a very attractive individual, and the Zero Suit definitely shows off her body, much to Michael's enjoyment. Michael always played as her when we played Super Smash Bros. Michael often talked about how she was incredibly sexy, and how he just wishes he could have a girlfriend like her. That was was truly Michael's goal, to have a girlfriend that looked like Samus. He made a Tinder account for that exact purpose. The issue was that he only swiped right on girls who looked like Samus, that is tall blonde girls with athletic builds. These girls, however, were not interested in a neck beard like Michael. Michael also went to parties to pick up girls. The same issue existed here though. He was only interested in girls who looked like Samus. These girls were certainly not interested in Michael. I'm sure Michael could have gotten a girlfriend, but he was only interested in a very specific faction of very attractive women. So his romantic prospects went unreciprocated. When we played Smash Brothers, Michael would sit there drooling, and I mean literally drooling, as in with his mouth hanging open and saliva slowly meandering down his Dorito-crusted lips and off his chubby chin. Michael could be very 
good at Smash Brothers when he actually tried. But he spent as much time gawking at Samus's ass as he did actually playing the game. Naturally, when Smash Ultimate was set to be released in December of that year, Michael was extremely excited. We were all excited, but while the other three of us were excited to play a new and interesting game, Michael was excited to drool over Samus in a new and improved high definition. On release day, all four of us went to the mall to get the game since Michael had pre-ordered it at GameStop. I don't remember anything particularly memorable happening on the trip itself. What I do remember was Michael's car. The inside was full of monster and coke cans, empty Dorito bags, and empty fast food containers. This garbage heap was particularly bad on the floor in front of the passenger seat, which is where I sat. Michael's detritus crunched and crinkled under my feet as I sat there on the way to the mall. I remember trying to push the cans and wrappers out of the way during our drive, and by the time we got to the mall, I had managed to clear a space of bare floor to put my feet on. When we got back, we of course spent the rest of the afternoon playing Smash Ultimate. In the absence of his beloved Samus, Michael played as Link. Did Michael just have a thing for blondes? We may never know. To Michael's great arousal and my great distress, one of the characters we unlocked later that afternoon was Zero Suit Samus. When the A NEW FOE HAS APPEARED screen came up, Michael immediately recognized the outline of Zero Suit Samus. He blurted out, OH YEAH! Which sounded like something between an excited outburst and an aroused mo. Michael's wet dreams had come true. While in Smash Brothers Brawl, Zero Suit Samus had always worn a skin-tight bodysuit. In Smash Ultimate, they included her casual outfit as an option. This was basically a sports bra and booty shorts. This pleased Michael's thirsty fantasies. Reunited with his lady love, Michael happily spent the next two hours or so playing a zero suit Samus in the casual outfit until we stopped for the day. That night, at about midnight, I left my room to go to the bathroom. As I approached the living room, I could see the TV was turned on. That was weird, I thought. It only got worse. When I got close enough to see around the corner, I could see that the TV had Smash Ultimate on it. It was set on training mode, and Samus was standing there in her casual outfit. As I rounded the corner, I saw him. Michael was on the couch across from the TV with his hand down the front of his sweatpants making an unmistakable up and down motion. Oh god! At that point, I was still enough behind him that Michael hadn't seen me. I just silently backed up and went back to my room. My mind struggled to comprehend what I had witnessed. Here was this grown man sitting in the living room at midnight jerking his Gherkin to Zero Suit Samus. I knew he was infatuated with her, but good lord! Instead of looking up Rule 34 of Samus and diddling his doodle in his room like a normal person, Michael had chosen to do it to a video game in the middle of the living room while everyone else was asleep. I mean, that's better than doing it when everyone is awake. I never told anyone what I had witnessed that fateful night. In fact, it's the first I've spoken of it since it happened. The rest of the year passed passed relatively uneventfully. Michael spent his time in his room at the engineering building or playing Smash Brothers while drooling over Samus. He still ate mostly Doritos and fast food, but that was just the standard for Michael. There was nothing out of the ordinary for him there. The following May, Michael and I graduated. He got his degree in electrical engineering and got a job designing the control systems for industrial machines. I never saw Michael after we graduated, but the memory of of him will last a lifetime. Um, bro, now nobody's gonna be able to play Super Smash Brothers as Zero Suit Samus without thinking of this dude. And quite frankly, I'm okay with that. I'm kidding, it's gross. All right, this story's called Neckbeard Gets a Mobility Scooter. Hello, 
dear readers. I'm back with another neckbeard story. For context to this story, I'm an incomplete quadriplegic due to a spinal cord injury in 2007. And after bad circumstances that happened after my injury, I was living in an independent retirement village from 20 until I was 22, which is where I met this particular neckbeard. He was an older man in his late 50s, and he was, uh, let's just say eccentric, but not in a charming way. He had a name, but he made everyone call him Snake. <laughs> I like that. And he dressed in a way that suited that self-given nickname. Picture a man wearing a dirty cowboy hat that hadn't been cleaned in 20 years, which was covered in skull rhinestones, long black pants that looked like they'd been put in a spin cycle with dirt and other unknown excrements, a black t-shirt smeared with God knows what, with a black vest with skulls and crossbones all over it. And then comes the smell of which makes me grateful of the lack of smell of vision in our advanced technology. It was like vomit that had been left in the sun for a week for that glorious marination of his beardiness scent. He could walk, but not well, and not for long distances, and he was infamous for spinning outrageous yards. Here's a few examples. He had a wife and a girlfriend. He owned the retirement village. He was a carer nurse and the manager of the disability business he attended weekly. He owned two Harley Davidson motorbikes and he was a millionaire. There were many more beaver sausage claims, but these are just a few. I moved from that retirement home in late 2012 when I was 22 to the unit I still reside in now. And although I am no longer in contact with him, this is a small city and news travels fast. Before I moved, I knew that Snake was going to get a mobility scooter, as he'd mentioned this to me. He'd asked if I'd teach him how to drive it. I think he was assuming that a mobility scooter and the power wheelchair I use are the same thing, which they are not. I still see him from time to time around town and the sight of his scooter. There's a large bull skull on the front handlebar, dream catchers, flags, wind chimes, and all sorts of fitting paraphernalia adorning his scooter. And then comes his driving, which is downright dangerous. Instead of driving in a straight line, he drives side to side. I'm assuming in an attempt to look like the snake he so adamantly preserves himself to be. His reckless driving and lack of care for anyone else's safety is something I've witnessed firsthand many times. But one time in particular prompted me to write this story. This was last autumn here in Australia, March 2019. I was speaking to a friend of mine who had just received a new power wheelchair. She's a paraplegic. She told me of an incident that happened a week prior when she was waiting at a roundabout when Snake came up behind her in a scooter. But instead of waiting for her to cross first, he drove his scooter up beside her and went over the curb to cross the road, not caring that she was there first and not wanting to wait. This made me furious and I wanted to confront him about this, as he not only risked her safety, but the safety of her brand new $40,000 power wheelchair. What? Those are that expensive? What? Okay, that's crazy. A week later, I saw him downtown and went to confront him about what he'd done. And the stupidity he sprouted as an excuse shocked me. But I live in New Zealand now, so it couldn't have been me. You're living in New Zealand right now. Yes, I do. The level of stupidity astounded me. This conversation went back and forth for a few minutes before I gave up and left. How was he in New Zealand while he was in front of me? The nerve of some people. I still see him around town, but not as often as before due to Brovid, so he was clearly talking crap. This story doesn't have a dramatic ending, just an entitled man and his mobility scooter. Thanks for reading. Okay, can someone explain to me why the power wheelchair is $40,000? That's more expensive than a lot of cars. Okay, what the frick? Ex okay, like if you can justify the price, then cool. But like as far as I know, that's just ridiculous. 
All right, this story's called, I used to be a bit of a neckbeard. This was back in my first year of high school. While I wasn't the kind who would harass others like in other stories, I did have some of the common traits that most neckbeards have. There isn't really any incidents regarding being a neckbeard, but I'll just have to skate some stuff I remember from that time. I was a closeted nerd and a bit chubby. I didn't talk about my interests with others if they were considered super nerdy, such as anime, some video games, etc. But I would go on and on if anyone I did know also liked them and would just keep bringing it up. Like this one time I had a classmate who also liked Pokemon and whenever we had a conversation, I would eventually bring up Pokemon regardless of what we were previously talking about. Hey buddy, that's normal. All right, when you have mutual interests, that's what people typically tend to talk about. That's how friendships are, you know, based, uh, founded, I guess. Anyway, don't worry about that part. Also, yes. I did have a neck beard. Ew, yeah, bad. I'm kidding. I was one of those freshmen who already started growing facial hair. Funny enough, some upperclassmen I knew were a little jealous because they couldn't grow any, and I thought it made me cool, even though I didn't really know how to take care or groom it properly. As I mentioned earlier, I moved to a new city and practically knew no one. So during lunch, I would try to see if I can find a friend group. I eventually hung out with this group of guys who I would describe as as the dude bro kind of guys. They were loud, energetic, and very obnoxious. Over time, I started to copy their behavior and eventually the kind of mindset when it came to interacting with and dating girls. I'll admit, I'm not very tall. In high school, I was very insecure about my height. I'm five foot seven. I know a lot of other guys are shorter, but my school was known for having a lot of sports teams, so I felt embarrassed seeing other students taller than some some of the teachers. I mentioned this as I started to get to the mentality where girls only cared about specific stuff about guys, like if they were athletically built or tall, as well as the cliche things that guys thought impressed a girl. Stuff like, she's just playing hard to get, bro, even though the girl doesn't seem to be interested. No, I didn't ask any girls out. In fact, whenever the subject of girls and sex came up, I didn't seem to be interested on the same level as the other guys. I thought that I had to like girls since I'm a guy and I have to find a girlfriend and I have to like someone. It wasn't till my sophomore year that I realized that I was gay. Later on that year, I found new people to hang out with and started to drop the traits I was picking up. I didn't like those guys as I came to the realization that the way I was acting wasn't me. It didn't feel right. I know I only had the basic traits of a neckbeard, so this story might not really count, but I wanted to share. I thought back on this and wondered how I would have been if I kept hanging around them. And before you ask, no, I didn't have a fedora. I did try a beanie hipster look, but I couldn't pull it off right. Now I take much better care of myself. I groom my beard, which has grown more on my face and less on my neck, and overall have taken better care of myself. Unfortunately, still single. While I'm not at where I want to be, I am making slow progress, but that's pretty much it. Also, so as I was writing this, I did remember a neckbeard-ish thing I did. I would always get to class early and be one of the first few students there, so I would make little notes with small pictures and put them on the desk of my crush. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for taking the time to read this. My man, you are not a neckbeard. You're just like all the traits that like aren't necessarily bad about a neckbeard, but just like things that are associated with them, but all the bad traits that make you a neckbeard. It's like the difference between being fat and being like a quote-unquote ham planet. Anyway, OP, I'm glad uh, things are looking better for you now, though. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.